Hello everyone and welcome back to Backseat VR Developer. It is the show where we are playing all of your favorite VR games alongside games of the developers alongside. that have created them. My name is Alex VR. I am one half of Between Realities. The other half of Between Realities is joined here alongside of me. It's Skiva. Hey Skiva. Hey, what's going on? Super stoked for some Demio. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to pronounce it Demio, Demio. all right? Okay. Because we've got Demio. Gustav Stenmark from the Resolution Games team here. Hey, Gustav, how you doing, man? Hello, I'm great. I'm great. Super excited to play Curse of the Serpent Lord with you guys. Do you play a lot of Demio, Gustav? I do. I play a lot of Demio. <laughs> uh, uh, especially lately, since we launched this yesterday, so it's been a lot of playtesting. Mm -hmm. Obviously, but uh, I do go back to the old adventures as well. That's good. So what's your role over there at uh, Resolution Games, Gustav? So right now I'm, I'm heading up the Demio team. Uh, it's quite a large team for Resolution. We typically have smaller teams. Uh, but uh, since Demio, uh, it's, uh, it's a big product. It's a big game uh, and we're committed to continue developing for it, so the team has been growing. Excellent. Uh, so I'm like the, yeah, lead producer maybe. Sweet. Well, you're a big deal on the on the Demio team, that's for sure. So we're definitely honored and excited to have you here with us. We're going to play Curse of the Serpent Lord, the newest campaign that has been released recently. And this is kind of a special episode because most of the time, the, the developers in the back seat right that's the name of the show but and this one you're kind of riding shotgun a little bit because we have the pc version of demio that you're joining us on isn't that right yeah that's true i'm playing on the pc version we launched uh, earlier this year uh which lets uh regular 2d pc players join their friends in vr that's so huge that's such a big deal Right, because not everyone, we want everyone to have VR, but not everyone has VR yet. And to be able to bring your flat friends in uh, to play with you being in VR is just just huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually yeah. been trying to yeah. get my wife to play totally. this game with me. And the first time that she put the headset on and grabbed the world and started moving through it, she's like, oh, nope, can't do that. And uh, now I'm excited <laughs> to have the PC version for, uh, for us to teach yeah. her and get her into the game too. Did you try it yet? Uh, no, we actually have plans on Monday for her to come in because honestly, okay. I've had so much fun here in Curse of the Serpent Lord that I have been like ignited with Demio passion. Uh, this this campaign, if I can say so, really pushes the envelope and, in my opinion, adds a lot of exciting new ideas and um, I think they're executed very, very well. So great job on this one, man. I Thank love you. the Serpent Lord. Me too. Thank I you so much. really, really, yeah. really enjoyed it. I, I, everything about this from the new characters to um, just just everything. The, the end boss. I mean, it's all so good. Yeah, we're going so to be spoiler yeah. free here, though. All right. Because we're not going to have time to get to the That's end boss good. here. True. But it'll give us some opportunity to kind yeah. of take a look at some of what you guys have done for this new campaign. Um, so the two of us are going to go Did you guys this, beat the boss, though? I've, I've been the oh, boss sorry. twice. Sorry. I beat the boss twice yesterday. Ah, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, and it, awesome. it's so great. And that's all I want to say because everyone really should get in there and, and play it for themselves. Yeah. Um, but the two of us are yeah. about to go in. You know, this game supports four people, right? But when you have two, what's what's your process for selecting classes, right? Like, what's the most important class to have out there? And, and why have we chosen these two to, to get in here? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, so I, I generally like playing uh, Guardian uh, because uh, I like the really tanky nature of that. Uh, so it's been my go-to uh, class since I started playing Demio pretty much. Uh, but I guess it's good to have a combination of like uh, being able to, to control the board a bit uh, with some, some distance shot and the, the new Warlock has that. So I felt like playing as the Guardian would be a good choice here. I mm -hmm. can uh, tank those big units we will encounter. Would you ever go into a campaign with a team and not have a guardian with you? Like, I feel like the guardian is almost like the staple of a group, but that could just be my my perspective. Yeah, I think actually looking at numbers, I would say Hunter is most likely to always be there. Mm, they can put out a lot character. of damage from basically anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's move in. Let's get in there and uh, see some of this campaign. Yeah. I'll just uh, drop by this chest first. 
get us geared up a bit. Yep, and of course that first chest of Curse of the Serpent Lord gives everybody a water flask, which is one of the new items in the game with uh, with this newest campaign. Yeah. The sun is scorching and your mouth is dry. This is the wrong oh, desert this is exciting. in the village of Hysteria. I can imagine there's probably a, a ton of ideas that you guys come up with that you would love to integrate yeah. into these campaigns, but eventually you kind of have to like figure out, you know, what's most important. Like, what does that process look like when you guys are kind of brainstorming your ideas and, and whittling down your decision making for like what items or, or what cards are going to go into the game? So we have like a game design group. Uh, we uh, play together weekly. Uh, and then we just like bounce around ideas. Obviously, this game has been uh, developed over a long time, so there's a host of ideas that haven't come to fruition yet that we are are also looking at bringing back. Right. So, uh, and then we uh, we try stuff. We do a lot of iterative development. We we come up with something, we try it, we see if it's fun. If it's not, we scrap it. If it has potential, we might develop it a bit further. Sometimes we nail it on the first, right? The first try. So that's, for the most part, that's our process. Nice. All right, well, let's let's see what your what your should... first move is here. Typically, when I enter one yeah, of these Yeah, should I spaces, go up the stairs, maybe? Um, or... I... Th or you know, through the door. This one's kind of tough because often when I'm playing this, I I like to like take a look at the points of interest and maybe just figure out like the I don't know like the most economic like wh how many how can I get to the most of these as possible? Yeah. Or I try to predict where the exit is going to be and, and get that that route. I'm guessing here. There's a big old yeah. door there. <laughs> you know, like yeah, let's, that looks let's like Let's go it. through the door. Maybe we can go a path like Ready? this. As, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. It was. I thought it was more enemies than I. Than it actually was. It was there's the sand pipes that threw me off. There's always that moment when you open a door and a bunch of stuff comes out of nowhere yeah. that <laughs> it kind of excites you and yeah. scares you a little bit. Totally. Can you reach the lamp? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I saw that, but see, these sand piles are a new mechanic in the game that I find very yep. interesting. If these are interacted with or hit, they can reveal something either good or or bad. And in my experiences so far, the sand piles have had either a pile of gold or a scorpion in them. And look, we're having some revealed right now. Oh, and look, there's a vortex lamp in this one. So I guess there can be lamps too? Yep. They can be good, bad, or neutral, I would say. Uh, uh, lamps being neutral. <laughs> yes. You know what? I'm gonna try and step back a bit and then use my piercing throw here and see if I can get the... I can't reach the fire lamp, but maybe it will... But the vortex lamp might pull it be in? sucked in with the vortex. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, vortex yeah. has a, a lot of reach, right? So now we get the fire... Alex, if you can exaggerate the oh, way you're looking pull. down so we can see the board better because... Like this? Yeah, even more if you can. Yeah, it's... You like this view? I mean, it's better. Well, you just let me know what you want to see, buddy. Okay. <laughs> you want me to be in like this? Oh, nice. That can work too. I do love that mechanic, right? Where you can be up above uh, really high and get a, a, a view of the entire board or you can come right down into the action and uh, see the fighting happening and seeing see the attacks. Yeah. I love that going almost like first person sometimes mm -hmm. and then zooming out a lot so you get the overview that's really cool are there any advantages for you to be in uh in the pc version or is it advantageous to play the vr version like what are some of the main differences yeah i mean the the game is identical right there is no difference uh we're running the same game it's just different uh, ui uh, so there's no advantage uh, that way. I think it's more per personal taste, like a uh, matter of that. Like I, I love going into DMO in VR, but when uh, doing play tests, sometimes it can be good to be on uh, uh, on mm -hmm. PC, so you're not entirely walled off, right, from from mm -hmm. the world. 
sometimes I want that, but sometimes it can be nice to to be able to uh, like, yeah, not be entirely immersed, right? Yeah, from a game Very development situation. standpoint, that that definitely makes sense. So yeah. Oh, I can't reach that. Can't hit that archer from downstairs. This, uh, yeah, the archer, yeah, it's... So, Kana, I find quite That's interesting. Um, the mechanics of Kana, um, they're... I find it interesting. It's almost like Kana has a mind of her own here or there. Um, yeah. How did you uh, figure out how these interactions were going to work? You know, or like, or what maybe what were some of the interactions that you tried that didn't work? Yeah, I mean, so we tried having her completely uh, autonomous, right? But um, it proved really difficult to make her be um, uh, as useful as you would expect from uh, from a playable class, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why when we landed on this astral mark where you can control her down to the individual tiles she will walk on. That was a fun uh, miss. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Might as well just pop this. So we did, we did go for for full autonomy, uh, or like entirely AI driven. Yeah, like sometimes I I notice that Kana will swing once. Sometimes Kana will swing twice. Sometimes Kana will just like attack yeah. something that she's standing next to. But most of the time, it does seem like she's following my commands. Um, so it's yeah. kind of, it kind of seems like you guys maybe landed somewhere in the middle where it's like, it has a mind of its own, but you know, you can yeah. heavily influence where she's going and what she's doing. That's exactly right. So, uh, she actually has, uh, like in, in the, it's not visible to the players, but she has action points, right? So she, uh, when you tell her what to do, she will use her action points for that. But if you don't, she will, uh perform actions on her own. Oh, okay. That so makes there's sense. like layers to it. She's like on a follow pattern until there's something to attack. So if I like don't that. use a master's call here, will Kana just swing at this thing because she still has an action point? Yeah. Nice. Uh, that I'm hoping that's gonna happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, so tell me a little bit about the uh, huh. like the progression of this like level up with the fortitude with Kana. How does this work? Yeah, I mean, she, so she gets uh, stronger, right? As uh, as she uh, uh, levels up, uh, so she will have a harder attack. I think the movement is in, like yeah, increased as well. I. I'm not sure we will land it on that, and I haven't played her that much. Yeah, I've never seen uh, the movement go over 20 geez. on this piece. Okay, yeah. And then... Uh, so the only thing is, like, you, you need to uh, keep her attacking stuff early, right? To gain those sweet experience points so she will level up. Mm -hmm. If uh, If Kana dies before leveling up, she will lose the XP gain, right? So... Mm. But not the tricky... level, right? Like, you'll, like if you hit level no. 2, kind of will stay she level 2. she doesn't lose level. Yeah. Except then the, the third level has this uh, super... super cat mode, we call it. Super cat. Uh, so she can fill up her XP bar one more time, and then she goes into this super cyan crazy mode. Uh, and that lasts uh, for a few turns, but then she's back on level three again. Sweet. I haven't seen Super Cat yet. We should try now. Uh, I have been um, uh, I have been the Warlock a couple of times, but just haven't haven't been able to get enough XP on her, I guess, to get up to the yeah that high lumber that high level. So I get that when it's, she uh, levels up, it's not that... easy, right? No, it's not actually, and especially if she dies, because then you're basically back to you have to restart the level. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if yeah. she levels up, I assume she hits harder. Yeah. What about damage? Does she take less damage when she levels up? 
I wouldn't, uh, I'm not entirely sure we will land it on that. Oh, oh uh, you know what it might be? It might be that drain mechanic, because I don't think she's doing that at level yeah. one, right? So she, she will drain, <laughs> so she will heal by attacking, right? So you should keep her attacking stuff, uh, both for XP and for gaining, uh, but I, I'm not sure if the drain is, uh, from level one or if it kicks in on level two. I think it's level two. If I had to guess here, yeah, I would say that, I that sounds very uh, reasonable, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have played even more with her. Um, Do you always fight these things? Like every now and then, you know, like we we run up on this twenty-one, twenty-one, or I guess twenty-one, twenty-one, but this this brute with twenty-one health. Like, it, are there ever times where it kind of makes sense to like hightail it and keep your distance from stuff, or are these things going to move fast enough to the point where you kind of have to deal with them if they're getting close? I think, I mean, it's, uh, she actually did the drain now on level one. Yeah, so. I saw that, yep. The key just walked in the room Back. over here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the flow of Demio, finding this creature with the key is our number one priority when we first get in here. So then we can escape because there's, there's an exit in this room, but you can't get through it without a key. Right, he's berserk now as well. Did Kana die? Uh, yeah, looks like it. I yeah. shouldn't have moved. That yeah, that, that attack is brutal, actually. The the corruption. Uh, so I got a question about up. um astral strike. This when when you cast this, it does. It's yes. this big five by five space. Um, I feel like it hits everything in that space. Is that true? An astral strike. Yeah. Yeah, but you can use it. Uh, uh, it will focus, actually. So if, if you only target one, you will do more damage to that one, uh, mm. that one unit. So there's like maybe five. How many, Do you know how many projectiles come out of that? Uh, no. Off yeah. the top of my head, unfortunately. That's OK. Oh, man. So this corruption thing is probably like the biggest new mechanic of this campaign if i had to try to i don't know say which one i thought was the most impactful um did you guys have multiple iterations of this uh of this um mechanic this corruption Absolutely. Mechanic? yeah both how it spreads and uh like uh, uh what it does to the player but I think what we landed on now is pretty cool. Like there's a there's a sweet counter with the water. Uh, if you don't drink the water or, or like wash yourself off, you will uh, you will start doing stupid stuff, right? You actually do get corrupted, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, I remember getting attacked by my teammates uh, because they were corrupted. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what uh, what platforms can you find Demio on? Uh, you can find it on uh, uh, Steam VR and Steam, obviously for the mm -hmm. uh, the VR and, and PC versions uh, on Oculus Quest One and Two, Oculus Rift, and uh, actually you can play the 2D version through Oculus as well. Oh, if really? You own, own the the game in, on Oculus, yeah. Oh, so the Ocu so if you do have it on Oculus um, for the desktop version. You can play the flat version as well. That's yeah, awesome. through the Oculus app. Actually, it was uh, really neat. So when we launched the the PC version, uh, mm -hmm. all Steam users uh, got the the 2D version for free, and we wanted that for the <laughs> Oculus users as well, so they can actually get the game. Uh, through the the desktop app and play through there. Very cool. What, in your opinion, is like the best experience? Like, if you were going to play a game of Demio just for fun, um, what platform would you be going into? Hands, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I play most of my VR on 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 the Quest Two. Actually, it's always sitting on my desk, so. Uh, 
I do. I do like playing on the Quest Two as well, especially a yeah. game like Demio, right? Because I can I can tilt the table up and I can lay back and relax, sit in a beanbag chair, like yeah. get nice and comfy, and the table will tilt so you don't have to bend your head down. Um, and it's super, yeah, just like that. It's super comfortable. Um, I really like that feature. That was a that was a really good design choice, in my opinion. Yeah, it saves your neck, right? When yeah, when oh, turns. it really does go above two hours or like the rounds you play yeah. for two hours it's gonna hurt your neck that's so I, really nice i do have another question about the platforms is there any plans to come to psvr or psvr2 and maybe you can't answer that but you know we'll see yeah i uh that would be cool right <laughs> no. uh, i can't really answer that yeah. that would be cool <laughs> Thing Good is, answer. We we uh, like resolution as a company and and uh, for Demi as well. Like we, I think we've been resolution has had a game on every major platform, uh, pretty much uh, on launch day. Uh, so we really want to have our games on as many platforms as possible, right? Nice. Uh, yep. That's just. Uh, And so, um, so this is one of the titles that you can still play on the Quest One, right? So if you have a Quest One out there, you can you can grab Demio and you can get in there with your friends. Um, this is not a Quest Two exclusive, as far as mobile headsets are concerned. Oh. Let's see. So you were just talking about kind of like yeah, if you're in here for you know two hours or three hours, you know, it might save your neck a little bit. Do you, what are your thoughts like? It, I imagine it must be like a fine line for you guys to walk having these these gaming sessions last hours, right? Like, when I play this game, I can't get out of this game without having the headset on my head for three hours, which for some people might be a really long time. Um, was it like... Was it like was it a struggle for you guys to kind of get comfortable with the idea of putting out a game that expects people to commit for so long as a group? Time for my blade to fly. Uh, in a way, I guess, but it was also in line with the product vision, right? We wanted to to build a like a role playing experience. Uh, and I mean, those games, I played a lot of pen and paper RPGs when I was a kid and also board games. And typically, played sessions are quite long, right? You, you spend an evening playing. Uh, we have since like added uh, the ability to save. For instance, you can you can actually play shorter rounds if you want. So, uh, And that's a big yeah. deal. That's a big deal because a lot of people don't have two, three, four hours to play a game all in one sitting. So being able to save and then come back with your group of friends and uh, continue on is, is a big deal. So I really like that feature. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, you made a good point, too, talking about pen and paper RPGs. You know, I feel like... You know, like you, like you were just saying, the mission of this game was to deliver that same feeling that you get with your friends when you're playing something like a pen and paper RPG. Um, but anybody who's yeah. done it knows that those sessions last a lot longer than a Demio campaign. Yeah. And they're a lot of work. They're a lot of work to prepare, especially for the DM, right? especially for the dm but even for players like you really yeah. have to be paying attention yeah. you know you have to like you have to be willing to kind of embody a character too in a lot of those sessions like they yeah. expect you to like know your background and you know your affiliation are you chaotic good or are you neutral whatever you know and in this game i find yeah. so approachable like anybody who maybe thought that one of those pen and paper rpgs was like a little much um you know, playing something like Demio, I think, gives them those exact same feelings, but in a in a more approachable form. Even though you're still expected yeah. to play for a few hours, it's less than a D and D campaign. <laughs> so was was D and D the main influence on this game when you guys were kind of thinking about the design choices and the play and how it plays? So, um, yes. <laughs> yes. The very short answer, yes, <laughs> right. But also a lot of other stuff, right? A lot of things have happened since since uh, then. But 
maybe more of like the the, the feeling of those uh, those really long sessions, uh, or like uh, being like completely immersed. Uh, I'm aching to start. How did you not get corrupted? Like there? thinking. Yeah, that's weird, actually. You should have gotten it, right? Maybe it was... No, I think I was still wet because I, I oh. splashed some water on myself before if... and they cancel out. So, so if you're wet and so you I step on one of these, I think if you stand on one of the red ones now, I think I you will be... Yeah, know. exactly. You will that. probably get be corrupted if you... <laughs> so if you're going to go ahead and play this on PC, uh, do you know what the minimum specifications are? Typically, when a game is on mobile, it's they're pretty low specs, right? Can uh, just about anyone play this on PC VR? I would say so. I'm I'm playing on a laptop now. Uh, it's not the most fully spec laptop either. Uh, and also, I mean, on on the PC, you can have you can do a lot of stuff. Oh, we found the the exit. Yeah. Uh, but we should uh, probably chase after some more of these sand piles, right? The sand piles? Try and find... The... You want some more gold? We yeah. only have 160. Yeah, we should, we should, there's a chest here as well. Let's, let's grab some. I'm usually in the camp of, of getting out of here as fast as possible. Like when I'm playing this, most of the That's time... That's a good strategy. It's like, okay, there's the door, we're gone. You know, like, I don't want to yeah. stick around and then have a bunch of monsters meet us at the door and then somebody takes damage and, you know, like, to me, it's not usually worth it. But I find it interesting that you're like, okay, now we don't have enough gold. Like, let's explore a little more before we leave. Oh, there are so many sweet new cards, right? There we are added some a lot sweet of cards. potions and stuff. And we also hid, like, a surprise in one of the sand piles. So, oh, oh, look, there it is. There it is. Have you seen it before? I have seen it. Is it always in a sand pile? Yeah. So I, it, uh, unless unless I uncover sand, I'm not going to find this. Like, it's not just going to be running around, right? Can you zoom yep. in on it? Can we see what it looks like? Oh, yeah. There you go. It's beautiful, right? It, it is, is beautiful. And quite useful. But it moves really fast. So we gotta catch it on the first try, otherwise it will run off, right? But uh, so getting back to the the whole PC spec thing, I think like um, it's it's not a demanding game. I mean, you can do a lot with the settings, right? You can uh, uh, maybe not as as much as. Uh, some other PC games, but we did add a lot of graphic settings so you can make the game more performant. Mm -hmm. uh, Time for my blade to fly. I have to say, and, uh, I've played most of my time yeah. on the Quest version, <laughs> and when I decided to go and check out the PC version, I felt like I had found my new home. Like the graphics and like some of the visuals on the PC version I love and are absolutely a step above what you see on Quest. You know, for example, like look at this ice yeah. lamp. This ice lamp here has like a bunch of swirling stuff in it, like this like nice little flame up on top of it and it's like it looks alive in a way that it does not in the Quest version. Yeah. Yeah, that's also, the thing, right? Quest is uh, bringing VR to a lot of players, which I, I just love it for. But it also has the. I mean, it's it's essentially like a, a mobile platform, right? So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a quite an impressive piece of tech. It when is. You think about it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right. It is. But you know, you're pretty much designing a game for for a cell phone, right? In a way, uh, yeah. the, the the graphics have to be scaled back quite a bit. But you guys really bring this entire experience um, to the mobile platform. You're not missing out on much. A little bit of of graphical detail here and there, but I don't I don't think anyone on Quest uh, is going to have any uh, any lesser of an experience totally. um, than the people playing on the PC. Totally, so. I agree with that 100. Mm -hmm. percent Which is why I think it took me a while to even try the PC version. Mm -hmm. um, and you know. 
the Quest version is fantastic, but the little details that are in the PC version are absolutely appreciated. And now I pretty much play it on PC every time. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. I think we actually did, did some some stuff for for the Quest version as well in terms of graphical upgrades. So you should check it out. Oh, really? So should I patch? go through the exit? Yeah, I think we're ready. Yeah. When you are creating bosses and or even even the main characters for the players to, to play as, what's the process around that? Do you guys sit in a boardroom and just throw ideas at each other and see what sticks, or or do you have um, do you have some kind of formula that you use to really to kind of make this work? I've always been curious on how how those design choices come to be. Yeah, no, so I mean. We pretty much, like, there is that, of course, like, uh, ideas from the team, uh, from, from like, obviously the game designers, they are the experts mm -hmm. we're working. Uh, Tommy, our, the, our CEO, he's uh, an accomplished game designer himself as well. He's very much involved in this. And uh, we've been working with Demio, with, uh, with Mike Booth. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has been acting as, uh, like, a consulting game uh, game director uh so we work closely with him on a lot of the mechanics as well uh awesome so yeah we, we get together except it's not in a boardroom yeah <laughs> right it's, uh, but uh yeah we do we we uh and and uh again like trying stuff is important right it is to, uh, it is so you you guys must play your own game a lot i'm guessing yeah, yeah. we do <laughs> uh, so this jeweled scarab is pretty cool, and I've noticed in a game that I played earlier that um, you can sell it here in Kleptos Bazaar yep. for a good amount of gold. I think it was like 750 or something like that. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of gold. 750 sounds good. But look yeah. at this. Look at this. This yellow point of interest over here. This spoilers slight spoiler alert everybody cover your ears if that worries you but this is a um a merchant who wants that scarab and if we can get that scarab to the merchant over there they will give everyone in the party a powerful card but that's pretty far away yeah it was really yeah it's really far away but uh, maybe we should move uh, that direction anyway right yeah the closest yeah, point it. of interest yeah I'll go up the stairs here. Yeah, and I'm you know, gonna... for spoiler's sake too, we're not we're not going to get there because we are right at the end of this episode. So yeah, that's good. We want to we right. want to keep some of this stuff as a surprise uh, for the people who want to go out and get this game, uh, because to me, I, and, and I'm not I'm not just saying this because you're on the line. Uh, to me, this is one of the best games that you can get in VR. Period. Like I really enjoy so Vimeo. So. That's great to hear. Uh, before we wrap uh, it up, uh, though, I did want to touch on a little bit, if we could, some of the changes that were made to the Sorcerer, if you're able to speak to them. Because I know that the Sorcerer kind of got yeah. buffed up. Yeah. Yeah, so the Sorcerer now can play, um, like, the Sap card on himself and Overcharge, and then unleash a lot of uh, those sappy lightning, stunny lightning uh, bolts. Uh, in the next turn, so so as a mage, if you can't, or as a the the, the sorcerer, if you can't, um, you don't have any meaningful use of sap. You can always overcharge, right? And then mm -hmm. um, that combined with the the new water flask can be really powerful. Right, because water in this game works as a conductor for electricity. Yeah. So you exactly. could like so spend a turn. We introduced to... water in. in... Oh, go ahead. So, no, we, we introduced water in. in uh, sorry, I, I just beat two guys up. It was friendly fire <laughs> there. Um, water was introduced in the in the last uh, episode. The the uh, it, that was set in a forest, and then for this. Uh, 
for this adventure, we wanted to do more with it. So now it's actually something that the players have a bit more control of. Yeah, that's cool. And I like how you can choose to use it as a heal if you're in a pinch too. It's it's nice to add a little yeah. bit of versatility to it. So the, for the people that are walking, this is, I mean, for the people that are watching, this is uh, one of uh, four, I believe, uh, different, different uh, books that you can dive into with completely different level design. Uh, different characters, different bosses, right? Everything is very, very different looking aesthetically. Um, so this game, it takes a lot for this game to get old, right? Because there's just so much so much going on and so many different types of levels. Uh, how much more do you guys have planned for this? Are you going to keep going with this, keep adding uh, books and, um, and new characters and playable characters and enemies? Yeah, I'm glad, yeah. So we, we have a few things around the corner. Um, so corner being the rest of the year, um, one of the things I'm really excited about, and I think it's uh, one of our, our most, uh, requested features is, uh, a two by two mode Yeah, dude. where you, two players can control, f uh, two heroes each. Nice. Uh, yeah. So if, if it's just you and a friend, you like can right now, play only you two. Yeah. Yeah. Like the right now, except we would be controlling four heroes, right? Yeah, uh, oh. and then uh, later in the year, we already announced uh, we're working on a PvP mode uh, for Demio as well. So PvP, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So very cool. Super excited about that and seeing what what the, the reactions are. But um, more details to follow. And very exciting. We're already busy working on on the next uh, adventure. Exciting. Uh, nice. It's yes. going to come out later in the year. Excellent. I need yeah. to... Uh... And in that one... Okay. Yeah, sorry. No, please, after you. Uh, no, I was just going to say, in that one, uh, we'll get to see what a town looks like. Oh. Oh, a town. Oh, yeah, I saw that. More. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I go no. to town. I love it. Um, I wanted to ask you, and I'm glad that I remembered before we wrap this up, about um, like the difficulty scaling in this game. You know, like a lot of times if I have a team of four, for some reason I feel like we have a better time getting through the worlds. But, um, you know, I, I, as far as I know, the game is designed to be able to be played with as many people as you want to bring in here. So can you speak a little bit to like how difficulty scales when it's like two teammates versus three teammates versus four teammates? and can two people do it as successfully as four? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is no. Uh, like, we try to keep the game balanced, of course, and... Uh, uh, but two players playing, it, it's going to be harder since... Uh, like, having more, um, more heroes means you have access to more abilities, right? Mm -hmm. When we're playing now, we only have four action points and then it's the enemy's turn again right? right so so in that regard it's it's uh it's like by nature it's gonna be be harder to be two players so uh, that doubles mode so, is really uh, gonna but, alleviate a lot of that yeah exactly uh, really hoping for that uh but um i guess overall it's oh this is the guy that brought me here the yeah rip. These the rift servants, yeah, they serves. are crazy. They pick people up. Look at how far he made you travel. You wow. were over here. <laughs> and he brought you all the yeah. way over here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, so, I mean, balancing is tricky, right? Because I think this game is the most fun when it's hard. Yes. A bit too hard, right? So uh, we don't want to make it too easy, but it can also be... Uh, like yeah, the the amount of enemies, for instance, matters, right? Even if playing two two players, the 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 uh, the enemies have less HP and, and hit you a bit uh, less hard. Well, you'll be happy to know that last night I played a, a game of Demio here on Curse of the Serpent Lord, and we got the the killing blow like by the skin of our teeth. Like it was. 
the we barely got it done but we did and it, there was this yeah. moment of just pure celebration and everybody cheering and i think that's the feeling you guys were going for and uh i don't know how you managed to balance this difficulty but i really do think that you guys nailed it so um thanks for giving us all these awesome experiences to do in vr man the last champion falls. thank you Anna. <clears throat> sorry thank you i'm super happy to hear that that's definitely what we we like what we're going for oh we actually died Look at that. I mean, that just makes sense, doesn't it? It's just fitting. Yeah. Perfect end timing. of adventure. <laughs> but it's not the end of yeah. the adventures because Demio is available now on Quest and PC and on flat screen PC. So you have absolutely, your friends have literally zero excuse not to play this game with you. Um, is there anything else about, uh, about Demio or about the team that you just wanted to mention real quick before we wrap this up, Gustav? I don't think so i mean a big shout out to the entire team right i think yeah they really knocked it out of the park with this this update I... super happy to work with them they've been continuously knocking it out of the park they haven't stopped since the time this game launched they've just been doing such a good yeah. job um so mad props to the entire resolution games team Yep, yep, and if this if this Thank update you. is any, indi any indication of the direction that you guys are going, I think everybody is going to be uh, in for a treat, and can, I think we I think at this point I've learned to kind of rely on Demio to be there for me to like always have that uh, that high quality experience that I can put the headset on for hours and, and stay in there. So now you guys have a responsibility to keep this going for us, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'm not going to take that lightly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Gustav yeah. from Resolution Games on the Demio All team, right. thank you so much for joining us. And everyone, thank you for watching. Um, Skiva, so thank you so much for all of your help, brother. It's a pleasure doing this with you. Again, I'm Alex VR from Between Realities uh, here for UploadVR.com. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you soon for the next episode of Backseat VR Developer. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.